Antonio College, welcome to TCTV. I'm Sabrina Harrison. And I'm Hubert McCarthy. A car with six teenagers inside crashed into a tree on Nima Collin Woodlands Resort property. And two of the passengers, including the daughter of Nima Collin founder Joe Hardy, were left in critical condition. Paige Hardy, 16, and Zach Nelson, 17, were flown to the Ruby Memorial Hospital after a car wreck which happened shortly before 11 p.m. Saturday in Warren Township, Fayette County. State police in Uniontown said the driver lost control of the vehicle and hit a tree on Hardy Boulevard, just off Smith School Road. The driver, a 17-year-old boy, suffered a minor injury and was suspected of being under the influence of alcohol. Police said a felony charge has been filed against the driver. The Let's Roll Ride is a motorcycle event organized by the Theory-Based Manufacturer and Business Association to raise funds for the Flight 93 National Memorial in Sharksville. Uh, Shanksville. Flight 93 crashed near Shanksville September 11, 2011, as passengers fought back against four hijackers in total. More than 300 riders and passengers in flights from hometowns across Pennsylvania, including Erie, Meadville, Conneaut Lake, Cranberry Township, Pittsburgh, Possville and Williamsport are traveling to raise money on behalf of the 2,220-acre National Park. There are 197 motorcycles from around Pennsylvania gathering today at Seven Springs Resort. That's, for, that's when a check for approximately $200,000 $200, will be presented by the Manufacturer and Business Association in the Roar on the Shore. An explosion at a nuclear waste facility in southern France has killed one person and injured four others. The Nuclear Safety Authority declared that the accident terminated soon after the blast Monday at a furnace in the Centro site in the southern region, about 32 kilometers from the city of Avagon. Authorities said there was no radioactive leak, but critics urge that France to rethink the nuclear power in the wake of the catastrophic at Japan's plant. British Prime Minister David Cameron declared Monday that Russia and Britain must set aside bitter disputes over the poisoning death of Kremlin critic in London five years ago to nurturing new trading ties and help promote world stability in the wake of the Arab uprising. As Europe struggles to reverse a plunge in financial confidence, the world waits for Germany's counselor Angela Merkel to make a fundamental choice. She, more than any other European politician, will have to either summon the leadership to rescue the Euro or concede that the political will is not there. Ms. Merkel faces far-reaching decisions about how to deal definitely with the debt crisis in Europe and more immediately whether to allow Greece to default or even to leave the currency union. Nine North Korean defectors, including three children, were rescued off the coast of Japan after drifting some 500 miles in a small, unpowered wooden boat. The Japanese Coast Guard said Tuesday it would take the nine to a nearby port in Japan while the central government in Tokyo considered their case. The group's leader indicated they want to go to South Korea. Fighting that rage for hours in Kabul Tuesday afternoon after a dramatic Taliban attack on the U.S. Embassy and NATO's command calmed down greatly during the evening hours, a military spokesman told CNN. Three police officers have died and others have been injured in the violence across Kabul, police said. The Afghan Police Health Ministry said one civilian was killed and at least 18 were wounded, but none seriously wounded. Ten years after the nation was unified in horror, President Barack Obama honored the legacy of September 11 victims on Sunday by personally tracing the trail of the terrorist attacks. Proudly declaring that the decade since has proven America does not give in to fear. At Ground Zero, Obama stood in solidarity with President George W. Bush right where hijacked airliners smashed into the Twin World Trade Center towers in 2011. He touched the names of those etched into a bronze memorial amid the rush of its striking waterfalls. Imploring Congress to follow his lead, 
President Barack Obama on Tuesday lobbied law lawyer makers to adapt his nearly 450 billion job plan, promising it would help workers in the construction industry and rebuild schools in crumbling conditions. Barack Obama says, what are Congress waiting for? From a high school in critical electoral state of Ohio, Obama delivered a speech to plug his plan. The outdoor audience was receptive to the point of adapting his refrain and chanting it back to him, saying, pass this bill. A BP scientist identified a previously unreported deposit of flammable gas that could have played a role in the Gulf of Mexico oil spill. But the oil giant failed to divulge the findings to government investigators for at least a year. According to interviews and documents obtained by the Associated Press, while engineering experts differ on the extent to which the two-foot-wide swath of gas-bearing sands helped cause, the disaster, the finding, raises the specter of further legal and financial troubles for BP. It also could raise the stakes in a multi-billion dollar court battle between the companies involved. A key federal report into what caused the worst offshore oil spill in U.S. history is set to be released as early as Wednesday. Strong driver's license laws have led to fewer fatal crashes among 16-year-olds, but with disturbing side effects, more fatal accidents among 18-year-olds. A nationwide study found many states require young drivers to get extensive experience, including driving with an adult before getting a full license. But, in most states, those laws only apply to those younger than 18. The new study suggests some teens are just putting off getting a license until they turn 18, meaning they have little experience and higher odds for a deadly crash. No cell phones while driving, period. That's the rule the National Transportation Safety Board wants for the nation's more than 2.8 million truckers and bus drivers. The change proposed Tuesday would be among the most sweeping highway safety measures since the push for mandatory seatbelts decades ago. But many truckers think it goes too far, especially because it would bar not only handheld, but hands-free devices. The NTSB enthusiastically endorsed the ban after ruling in on a fiery Kentucky wreck that killed a trucker and 10 people in a van on their way to a wedding. The board said the trucker was distracted by his hands-free cell phone. 